I'm Nathan Rogers with MMA Futures. I'm joined today by newly signed UFC fighter, gym owner, and coach, Trey Ogden. How are you doing today, Trey? Good, brother. How are you? Good. Uh, man, I mean, let's talk about the big news here. I mean, you just recently got that uh, that contract with the UFC. What does that mean to you? I know you've been working towards it for a long time. I mean, it means everything, you know, obviously. Um, just a continuation of the marathon now. Martial arts marathon is kind of my thing. And uh, so now we're going to keep it going. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of the guys that we see get signed to the UFC these days are doing short notice fights um, or, or coming through the Challenger, ser the Challenger Series. Um, Contender Series. Contender Series. There you go. Um, you know, you kind of did it a different way with the uh, through the Dana White's um, looking for a fight. Um, what did it mean to kind of have that that direct interaction with him and being able to get signed in that way? Well, you know, like if you know anything about my journey, I've been fighting like 11 years before I got even one opportunity to fight in front of the UFC. And so, um, you know, like I'd started to get to the point where I didn't know if I was going to get an opportunity and I'd done like a tremendous amount of compounding work that I wanted to show. And so that had been building inside of me for some time. And I felt like um, I had been passed up by the UFC on a lot of short notice offers and some contender series fights. And it just seemed like I was on the doorstep forever, but that I just couldn't break through. And I just felt like I was being, um, like whatever like the matchmakers had seen that had them not like like passing me up was just like incorrect <laughs> is like how I felt I was like my gosh I'm just being like literally overlooked and so then when I had that opportunity to fight literally in front of Dana White with no filter like a lot of people would sit backstage and to my teammates hearing this you know like that I, I hope they can draw some inspiration from this is like a lot of people backstage that would make them more nervous it would like psych them out right but for me, it was just like it freed me to just be purely in the moment because I knew that I had no filter between me and Dana White and that this was going to be a meaningful and impactful chapter uh, in my fight career. And um, and I was just crazy grateful for the opportunity, and I just thought it was super cool, man. That's exciting, man. I was excited to see you get in there, have a full camp, be able to get in the UFC and, uh, and show them what you got there. Yeah, um, when, when, when are you looking at being able to get that first fight in there? Man, whenever. I I'm ready, you know. Um, originally, they were talking, like, stay ready for March, and now it's probably looking like April. But, um, you know, you never know with them. I, I don't have any uh, official fight news yet, but I could get that information any day. And uh, I'm just working to stay ready. And uh, I'm excited, man. I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing who the first opponent is and who my first project is. Man, I mean, Glory MMA down there in Kansas City is really kind of on the up and up. I mean, you guys have had fights in the last couple cards. Um, not all of them gone your guys' way, but, uh, man, Glory's kind of taking over the Kansas City area. Tell me a little bit about how the Glory system works down there and what it means for you to be part of a gym and, and own a gym with that brand on it. Well, you know, and I, I try to tell people this who are on the mat, you know, like, we're extremely lucky to have um, a world-class gym where we live. Like, some people drive an hour just to train with us. Some people drive hours to train with us, you know, and then go home on the weekends, but, like, there's a lot of people who want to do MMA, who have a lot of skill or a, a potential like talent and stuff. Um, young kids who just don't have like a good MMA gym in their community or a good jujitsu gym in their community or anywhere to even go train. And so not only do we have three glory locations in Kansas City that you can train at with gigantic schedules, but, um, you know, it's a world class gym. And so. I mean, I'm just really grateful. I keep that in mind all the time. Obviously, I'm one of the people that's uh, pushing it and making it that way and, and further building this thing. But, um, you know, it's it's not like it's not like it used to be, you know, where you couldn't even find a gym. It's like it's just really cool, man. It's come a long way. Man, you, you uh, you're you're all the way back from the grindhouse days. I mean, how has the, the MMA scene in um Kansas City change over the last few years. You know, you guys used to have Grindhouse, and you guys had uh, um, Jason High and Elsie uh, Davis's gym down there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and now, really, kind of it's been that glory takeover. Um, obviously, you know, former teammate Shark Shark Bates got his own gym there now too. Mm -hmm. So you guys have a little another competition there. Um, but uh, what has it meant to you to be part of and see kind of the growth of the sport in your community? It's it's, it's ideal, you know. It's great. I uh, Martial arts is my lifestyle. It's my preferred lifestyle. I think it has so much to offer individuals and so much to offer the community. And, uh, you know, it's been it's been 
it's hard it's hard to like like it's been crazy to watch it blow up like this but also it's like not really a surprise because five six seven years ago we all kind of knew like we were grinding you know and we've been doing this work and just uh you know i said this on a podcast i did last week it's like uh the old saying like every other overnight success it takes about 15 years you know and it's kind of like we're just starting to get noticed but it seems like we're just doing what we've been doing so i mean obviously james really kind of helped push the way for a lot of this stuff with i'm sure. um, getting to the ufc and getting a couple of big paydays right off the bat was able to help expand and, and get the people in there um you know, what does it mean for you to have a mentor like James um, to help build your gym, to help get your UFC career going and all those things? Well, it's it's certainly paved the road in Kansas City. Like, James Krause could have got signed to the UFC, had his short notice fight, got his double bonus, and left. But instead, he bought the gym he worked at and then built a team and then got the entire team signed to the UFC, which is like, I don't know if anyone else is – done anything like that i mean it's really incredible so one we all owe him a huge debt of gratitude for that and two like for me like to have him as a mentor like he has essentially laid the blueprint and this has shortened my learning curve um not just as a martial artist or my fight career but definitely in uh me opening the gym and and that side of things for sure so man let, let's talk about the elephant in the room you know this weekend you've got some guys fighting on a big card there or next weekend i guess um there in kansas city on fac 12 um look into the same thing you did i mean dana white's coming to, to kansas city um man what does it mean to you to kind of be the the guy behind the scenes on this one being the coach on it and what do you expect to see from some of these guys well um you know i love coaching the fights it's, you know so it's uh FAC is always a big deal for glory because, you know, we usually are half the card. And so it's just like a ton of our teammates are back there. Either they're fighting or they're coaching and they're there for support. So um, that's always wonderful. And then we get to see a lot of our teammates fight all in one night. So um, it's always, always great for that. Um, As far as the guys on the pro side of the card, I mean, who are you anticipating getting a real good look from Dana White and possibly taking that one of those contracts home? Yeah, so, uh, you know, from our gym, we have uh, Isaac Dolgarian. So um, he's an undefeated amateur, undefeated pro, um, and uh, he's fighting for the 145-pound title. So he has steamrolled literally everybody he's fought, so I can't imagine that, that anything changes here. Um, when I look at Dolgarian, you know, he's he's an interesting case because he's, he's a kid that has, like, incredible talent. Like, for sure, he's a UFC-caliber fighter with his potential is limitless. But – he just can't find any competition. So it's like, you know, he's just wrecking people and uh, no one wants to fight him. He's always having to go up and wait. So he's almost like a guy that has to go to the UFC a little early just to find anyone to compete with him, you know? So um, Isaac Gilgary, you know, you talk, you talk about a little bit, um, you know, he's a guy that I've seen um, compete for since he was a, a young amateur. Um, and he's always had a hard time um, finding opponents, mainly because of the fact his, his background is he's Elsie mm-hmm. Davis's nephew, I believe. Yep. Um, or cousin, and, and cousin or nephew, I can't remember. Cousin, and he's a world class yeah. wrestler. I mean, so he's had a really hard time finding. And I think that that's kind of one of those things that you guys are seeing a lot of things from these guys from Glory right now. A monster. Isaac Dogarian is a problem. And I don't think he's like, I think he's fighting at 145, but I think he'll eventually end up at like 135. And uh, yeah, he's going to be world class, man, for sure. My guy, my guy Mike England. He's an uh, undefeated amateur. Yeah, Mike England, he's a beast. Uh, he's another guy that can't find anyone. You know, same thing. He takes everyone down and pounds their face out, and no one can do shit about it. So he's another guy that could could get a good looking at from Dana White as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike, he's another one of those guys that I've seen fight an awful lot. Um, you know, he's, he's he's rocking the mustache now, or at least he was last time I saw him. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> what makes him stand out as a fighter, you know, himself? He's got incredible wrestling, like just like Isaac, man. I mean, top, 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 top tier. Uh, and, you know, for like his size, his gas tank is ridiculous as well. And his uh, he has a unique way of ground and pound, man. Like he, he seems to be able to make posture and space while still controlling people. And uh, his ground and pound is, is very dangerous, very serious. You know, you got a lot of good MMA grapplers at Glory there. Um, how does he compare as far as – MMA grappling with with likes of like James and Grant Dawson and uh, Derek Minner. Well, like it's hard to uh, to do like a direct comparison, like person to person. Like, and I, you know, I would never talk about. I don't think it's good etiquette to talk about like how training rounds go in the gym necessarily. But he, you know, 
he has got serious danger. His danger factor is, is his MMA grappling, and uh, his in cage results speak for themselves. You know, man, I'm awesome. I mean, who else do we? You know, even guys that may may not be looking at the contract. Who else should we be looking at on that pro side of that card? On the pro side, well, the, uh, there's also the Bellator uh, former world champ on there. Dantes, Eduardo Dantes, am I saying his name right? I mean, that's a banger of a fight, you know, for a regional level fight. Um, that's that's hella awesome. And then uh, my guy, I have a guy on the card from my gym, uh, Zach Scroggin, undefeated amateur. This will be his second pro fight. He's 1-0 pro, looking to go 2-0, you know. Obviously, it's a little early for the UFC, but I think it's a great opportunity for him to get the fight in front of Dana White, um, you know, put on a good performance and have this whole experience. It's like damn near like a contender series experience early in his pro career. And I think that he'll level up from this experience for sure. I mean, do you think there's a benefit for him to be even just be seen and kind of get on the radar with those guys um, this early in his career? Absolutely. Oh, for sure. How could it not? How could it not benefit him? Okay. As far as those guys getting on the radar, you know, let's go back and talk a little bit about these amateurs. I mean, you've got a lot of amateurs on the card. Um, mm -hmm. and you know what? You, you can watch the amateur fights on MMA Future, so it's always good to be able to talk about those guys a little bit. They're free on our YouTube channel. Um, yep. Who are these guys that, uh, as amateurs, that that uh, that you look forward to seeing? That you should feel like have a lot of growth potential. So uh, I have four from my gym on the uh, amateur card. So I have a debut guy who took a short notice fight, Edward Bruce, a uh, good wrestler. I'm really excited to see he's fighting another debut guy. Um, excited to see how that goes for him. Um. And then my next kid on the card is Mason Pillow. And Mason Pillow is like my Justin Gaethje. Like this kid is going to entertain you every single time you watch him fight. It's going to be a serious dog fight. And uh, his pace and pressure and wrestling and boxing and everything all put together is he's an animal. So a uh, little change of venue here. Um, so, so Trey, you had a couple of other guys on that card that you want to talk about. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the other amateurs. Yeah, so I was just finishing up with uh, Mason Pello. Uh, we're having a little technical difficulties, but uh, so I got like Mason Pello. So I was gonna say is that he's an exciting fighter. He he's a dog, and he's fighting a really exciting uh, athletic wrestler too. So that should be a banger. And then I have Lucas da Costa, nicknamed Pojada, which means uh, he's Brazilian. That means brawl in Bra uh, Portuguese. And uh, he is he's one of my chop wood carry water kids. Always in the gym. Always working hard. Loves to fight. Uh, comes to finish. He's got serious knockout power at 135. And then uh, in the amateur main event, we have Alejandro Gomez, uh, five and zero, oh, and he's going up against a seven and zero oh opponent. And uh, so we're really excited to have him show out there as well. And which one of these these guys do you expect to see going pro here pretty soon and seeing kind of uh, showing us their stuff on the big stage? Yeah, so I just had Zach Scrogg and Nick Met go pro last year, um, and they were both at about 8-0, and 9-0 and amateur. And so Gomez, uh, uh, Gomez, he's at 5-0, and so after this he'll be 6-0. and um, You know, Mason's looking to make it 4-0. Lucas will be 4-1 after this fight. So I really uh, – my other guy, Heston's like 4-0. and So I really like want to see them get 8-10 to 10 fights um, amateur. So I, we're probably a year away from another pro. Um, out of my gym. Awesome, man. Well, hey, Trey, thanks for, even with the technical difficulties, thanks for hopping on no here. No worries, brother. Chat with me about it. Um, we're excited to see you guys next week at uh, FAC 12. Um, be sure, if, you're, if you uh, are not subscribed to the MMA Futures YouTube channel, check it out. Follow us on social media. Um, check out, if you're in the Kansas City area, be sure to go check out uh, Overland Park, uh, Glory MMA um, and Fitness, um, Lee Summit MMA Fitness, any of those glories. Um, I think you're, you can't go wrong. Um, Trey, once again, man, I appreciate you and, uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.